Hi, my name is Steven, and I make fonts as Aerotype. Lately, I've been working on my family Lang, and I am making old style numerals uh, and small caps. And so I think the bulk of today's video will be me working to get to the next step in the small caps. Um, I'll be refining their spacing, adding anchors, and hopefully by the end of the video, or if not very soon thereafter, I'll be starting to compose uh, diacritics. Um, maybe I'll fit that into a next video because I imagine it might be a little bit of work figuring out exactly which diacritics I need to build and it'll depend on how automatic glyphs makes that process. I haven't done small cap diacritics in glyphs for a long time. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it will be some figuring out, but there's certainly some stuff to do before I get to that point. And I guess I just also wanted to share where I'm at. So, uh, yeah, I didn't share all of this on YouTube, but I've worked on some old style numerals. So let's see. Um, there were the tabular old style. Here are the normal old style. Here are the normal figures. So this is probably better to put with like, um, you know, some letters for uh, reference. So you can kind of actually see what's happening. So regular, the kind of the default numerals in this family are lining figures. They match the cap of the cap, the top of the cap height. Um, and uh, there are tabular figures um, also where all of the columns of figures will line up. That's kind of nice. And actually, that is true between weights. So even if you go up to the black weight, for instance, um, the, t the figures keep the same proportions. And so that's really, um, and in any combination, that's really nice for countdowns or uh, menu pricing, such things. Basically anywhere you want to see data, uh, numerical data in an orderly way where columns line up. Um, kind of the, the classic one is like a annual report, but not too many people make annual reports and tabular figures are useful in a lot more places than that. Um, so here are the uh, tabular old style, and then yeah, just old style. And old style numerals, um, you probably already know this, but they are useful to have in running text kind of mixed in with a uh, lowercase setting. And actually, they are also useful um, for putting next to small caps. Um, this might this will actually not quite preview as we want it because there's also small cap figures that I've been yeah building. Um, and I'm suddenly realizing that perhaps my small cap, wait, what? Let's try this again. I wonder if I've been making small cap figures the X height size, which, if I have, that is sort of silly. Um, let's look at our metrics. No, I think these just didn't. Um, I just, let's see. I need to do caps to small caps to get those into small caps. OK. That makes more sense. In fact, perhaps maybe small cap figures should only appear in caps to small caps, but not the normal small caps. I think that's what I'll do. Um, I don't know. I'm guessing I'll, I'll need some like research on forums or user feedback to really quite know that. If you have an opinion about this, uh, put it in the comments down below uh, so that others can learn uh, immediately what might be the correct way. And maybe I will still need that information. Um, yeah, by the way, I guess if I wanted to find that information, I might go into uh, type drawers. This is a pretty helpful website. Small caps, figures, open type. I would search something like this. Um, 
and then see if somebody mentions specifically. Ah, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, here's kind of what I was thinking might be the uh, a useful piece of logic. So, yeah, pretty funny to see how many figures people include in a typeface, but there's, you know, sometimes justification for all of them. Um, right. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of what, um, what I was thinking might be the one. Uh, that is omit them from small cap and do include them in caps to small caps. So let's do that right now, actually. Well, it's, I th think I still need to rearrange these, but um, we will consider that later. Um, and let me do that in the italic as well. Um, small caps, no, thank you. Okay, so let's go back here and try this again. So we've turned off our caps to small caps. Wait, our small caps, but we still have caps. Okay, so let's, I'm just uh, making sure that this basically seems to work. And now I am still, ah, this, okay, okay, this makes more sense. So the reason why this initially looks like these are going to the lowercase x height is because this actually changes to the, uh, the small cap x from the lowercase x. So if we watch that, yeah, that expands a little bit and these shrink a little bit. Okay. Um, let's see if I do, uh, let's try this like old style figures next to the normal small caps feature. Maybe this hasn't updated yet. Let's, all right. Um, let's see. The glyphs app preview of features I know is not quite like authoritative exactly. It's just there more for a preview while you're designing. So it does seem like it's not working quite as I expect, but I'm actually not gonna worry too much about that. Um, I could be missing something, uh, but I'll think about that actually once I actually build some fonts and see what shows up in the real fonts. Um, but that is kind of a good basic look at what I've been working on as far as figures. I still want to make some scientific superiors and inferiors. And um, according to a friend uh, who I was asking about this, it's maybe best to have small cap figures be tabular by default. Um, at least for them, they said that the place they use the most is in like a table of contents in a book where that's one of those places where you want tabular figures. I don't know. Um, I might just make small caps tabular as well. Uh, one thing I've done in this family, here's like an interesting secret of type design to be efficient is that by default, actually, all of these normal, let's um, show the info thing, uh, command shift I, by default, the normal drawing of each uh, figure for almost all of them is tabular already. So these are all 615. Um, and yeah, they look pretty good together. Uh, the normal figures do have a little bit of kerning. But then if we turn on the tabular figures, and I'm not just doing this because I'm lazy. Uh, it's, I mean, part, partly perhaps I'm trying to be efficient. Um, this is done in like a lot of really good families though. And if you 
kind of design these a bit like a monospace, it, it's fine. Um, and then the only one, sometimes, if you can get away with this, the only figure you have to change is the one to make it tabular. And then the others can just all be components of their base. And then beyond that, it's actually really neat because you can uh, extend that logic a bit so that, for instance, the old style figures are also just components. Oh, that won't work because uh, this is on. But these are components of like the basic three, for instance, four, five, six, obviously, seven, eight, nine. And then the only ones you have to redraw are actually one, two, uh, zero, one, and two, which is pretty nice. Um, one thing I'm currently trying here is a zero, a small cap, ze or a old style zero that's more like, almost like a ring or a perfect circle. Uh, some typefaces do that, and it's kind of a cool look. Uh, I'm trying to give it like a light amount of Lang style contrast. Um, I don't know. I have to test it more before I'll be really confident in that solution slash maybe get feedback from people. Um, one thing I did notice just now looking at this with fresh eyes is that this old style figure one might be a little too extreme. Like it really comes down here and sits really far below the uh, X height because basically I just took this one, which is already maybe on a slightly low side and I just moved it down without kind of adjusting it much. Um, if that makes any sense, I basically did this, you know? Um, so what I want to do is probably bump that up just a little bit. I'm going to like make a backup here and I'm holding like control option while I'm moving this so that this scales a little better. Yeah, already I think that looks quite a lot better. Kind of a simple thing, but I think probably pretty useful in this context. Something else I want to try is, okay, well that looks terrible, but if I go a little less extreme, I think that I can, I'm just going to test this and see if it like even builds. But basically I can get very close to that shape that I wanted without uh, the extra middle point here, which would be great because then it'd be much smoother across the interpolation range without me having to worry too much about it. Oh, let's, uh, wait, oh, I thought it changed. I don't know. Oh, well, um, let's duplicate this. Sometimes it's, a lot of the time it's better to make a glyph duplicate by the way, rather than a layer. Cause then you can test them one against another, but Sometimes I'm just giving myself an easy backup, and I think that's okay. I don't know. I'm also backing up in glyphs, but this is like a visual backup that's a little easier to flip back to if I want to. But yeah, um, this is pretty nice because you can see that it's a very smooth uh, ramp up, and without a middle point there, it's perfect without me having to worry about it too much. Whereas, for instance, when it has a middle point here, it still works because I've kept the middle point at a 45 degree angle. So there, I don't think there will be any kinks in here per se, but it does get a little bit lumpier than I want it to be. So I don't know. I'm basically going to build it. And if the font builds, I might probably simplify the structure of the general one. All right, so let's go back for a second just to finish my thought there. I, I Yeah, I already did bump it up. So yeah, already I think that's probably quite a bit better. Maybe I'll just try it even further. I don't know. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, it's a little abstract just doing this by itself, so I should probably um, just verifying that the thickness is kind of what I want it to be. Yep, I will probably come back to that once I do a bit of proofing and design work with this. But um, yeah, the main event that I wanted to do after kind of showing that and thinking about it a little bit, by the way, after that, I often want to check for incompatible masters in this glyph view. And oh yeah, I should probably fix this here as well. Okay, let's do that. Um, I guess I will want to uh, one yep I'm doing command uh, tilde to go between these glyphs windows, by the way. Um, easy way to kind of go between a Roman and an italic family. You can keep Roman and italic masters in the same glyphs document, and that works for a while, but then it sort of breaks down after a bit uh, because it doesn't work for building in as many ways as I want it to. So, yeah, good reason to try something else. Oh, yeah, here's where I had already tried this kind of crisscrossing style. So we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, uh, now finally over to our small caps. So here are the current small caps. Um, maybe I should actually show them... I'll do this thing again. Uh, let's do the Heffler text thingy um, and turn on small caps. Okay. Um, so yeah, I ran current on and I haven't super closely checked the results, but uh, I don't know. I want to kind of think about the spacing more before I really get hung up on how the exact kerning can be improved. So yeah, this is kind of a nice overview of it. Um, yeah, just kind of looking at it. Uh, some of these have intermediate sources, by the way, which are pretty handy. I don't know if I've talked about them on YouTube before. It doesn't matter because probably, uh, you know, nobody watches every YouTube video. But uh, yeah, some of these have intermediate sources so that you can control the middle more, which is pretty important with small caps since I'm having to fit so much into the black style small caps um, that I kind of want to control it a little better in the middle. Uh, for instance, I think this should maybe be tucked under just a little bit, but then in the middle, I want it to be more symmetrical again, stuff like that. Um, you can actually see if we, let me copy this and put it in the background for a second. And if I reinterpolate this, oh, by the way, to make a intermediate, you like add a layer and then you set it as intermediate and that prompts you to enter some uh, variable axes where that thing sits and then you can say reinterpolate and it kind of interpolates at that part of the design space as it would and then you can fix it as you want to so right I'm going to bring back my fixed one And one thing I learned actually in this process is that it's pretty, it's vital to keep your um, 
intermediate layers under the same kind of parent uh, layer. Otherwise, the way font make or glyphs to UFO glyphs lib works, it kind of creates duplicate sources in the design space, and then that doesn't allow you to build. So that's no fun. All right. Um, So I haven't properly fully thought about this, to be honest yet, but we want to take off kerning first. Um, I did set up a spacing string with small caps and upper caps, uppercase, um, normal caps. I put that under my arrow types glyph lib, not glyphs lib, glyphs scripts, so that basically if .sc is in the glyph name, um, it'll create a small cap pattern. So that is to say, let's go to all, let's select a few, and then my script is here, spacing, and this is available on GitHub. My scripts aren't that fancy, but some of them are, they're useful for me. Um, so I wanted to start sharing things like this. And yeah, so that's pretty nice. Whereas if you are, um, you know, spacing, well, that's, let's do something more obvious. So if you're spacing these, I haven't actually tested this yet, but I think it should work. Um, make spacing string. Yeah, it puts them against the lowercase control characters, lowercase n and o, uh, rather than the small caps. So. Let's turn off the kerning again, and let's set this to show the current thing. Might as well be black and white. And so I think in this uh, weight, I kept the Maybe I was going to say for a sec that I thought I had kept the overall um, side bearings and maybe I had for a lot of these. Um, for instance, if we do like O and then O to small caps. Uh, yeah, I think maybe I kept it, but then I started perhaps to resolve them. So, okay, that's interesting. I don't know how important that information is to be honest. I think the main thing is that I wanna make sure to set up uh, references where it's sensible. So now if I change this, it'll tell me that this needs to change. I think the right side of that B is a little open because it just kind of optically looks like this gap is too big and this gap is a little big compared to like the other gaps. So let's change that. I'm using hotkeys. Um, I'm not gonna change it by much, but a little bit. And yeah, often pretty tough to know exactly the sort of best amount of space. It's kind of half logic, half um, visuals. Perhaps it should be all visual, but and yeah, by the way, the thing I should really do first is kind of analyze this again, just the basic uh, string. So I wanna get my control characters looking similar where the overall space between two O's, two round shapes is sort of visually similar to the overall space between two H's 
Of course, that's weird when there's serifs involved. It's a little more complex because the volume between this shape and this shape has to be sort of fuzzy in that the serifs, if they start to actually touch, that'll look like a sm suddenly closer spacing than what we have here. It's easier if I get rid of the metrics. So that's under like view, show metrics, or shift command M. I'm suddenly realizing that this is probably a hard and weird thing to narrate. So I don't know how much I'll actually narrate it. Um, I guess I'll try to do the real basics. Often I wouldn't link D to the side of O, but here I think it's pretty much the same shape and it's close enough probably. I might change my mind later. Yeah, honestly, a big thing I will do is just add these side references what the heck okay equals and then a bar sets it equal to the opposite side didn't know that for a long time but it's pretty nice hard to say if this should get a little i mean often the eye does get a little bit of extra space Maybe I'll do that just to, and I'll just guess that like four is perhaps the right amount of space. And actually, I'm going to set it just for this uh, master um, because it's very likely that we want a little less there, something like that. And the double equals allows us to control those references separately for different for different layers I think this J probably needs a tighter left side to look correct against these controls uh, And I'm also looking down here. I don't know. The end is not symmetrical, so usually you need a little less space on the right side because there's not a serif to fill any space there. It's sort of hard to, to know how much less. I almost wonder if I 
I was gonna say, I almost wonder if my O's are a little too close together. They might be, I don't know. Basically it's in trying to make this N feel balanced. If I look at like N here versus here, this felt really tight. I should maybe have And perhaps the H should have a little less. Um, so I'm going to uh, be a little less than the uppercase, just because it's a bit smaller. So I selected everything, then did Control Command to M to update the metric. So this matches the updated H. And this matches the updated O, for instance. Funny detail is that my office is extremely warm today, um, thanks to heaters that are a little bit aggressive, which is better for sure than heaters that are too conservative, but still a little bit uncomfortable, especially in headphones. So not the easiest day to make a YouTube video, so I will probably cut it off a little early and just keep on working on this <laughs> um, uh, without oversharing. Difficult to do sometimes, but okay. I will probably uh, try to space this A to Z in this source just so I have done it. The Q, I always want to set it to the same side bearing as the O, but um, but then I also some, often want the tail to exceed the right side. Basically, the, the diagonal should have very small side bearings. But beyond that, it's hard to say how small. A lot of typefaces even make them uh, negative side bearings, but I don't think that's the right answer here. I don't, I don't know. Okay, well, that's a first pass of that. And uh, yeah, I still have to do the other three primary masters. So the 
Roman black, and then the italic light and black. Or, or thin and black, rather. Um, but this is a start, and uh, that kind of shows the process that I that I go through in spacing, uh, and then kerning comes after that. And uh, I don't know. I, I end up doing this many times in a typeface, many passes, and I kind of see things in use that, like, don't feel the best, and so I'll go back and do another pass. Um, or, you know, a big thing is that I'll do this for punctuation, for instance, and stuff like that. That's also just as important um, and harder, I would say. Quotes are one of the harder things to get the spacing and kerning right on, but super important because they show up quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that's interesting to see a little glimpse into the figures work and small caps work. And yeah, next time I will try to, I think maybe later today or tomorrow or something, I'll try to record uh, the diacritics process because that's pretty fun, basically. Uh, pretty interesting, I think. So if you watched, thanks for watching. If you're working on something creative or something that has your attention. I hope it's going great. Um, yeah, take care.